Ha! I think I made it on time, maybe. Uh, welcome to uh, episode 11. I don't know if it makes any sense to count episodes, I just uh, started it before and I just kept up the counter on my little th thing when I transfer this uh, video after the recording uh, to YouTube. Uh, <coughs> okay, mm, so I uh, yeah. Today I have my coffee already prepared in time, which I didn't yesterday, which was uh, the reason why I was a little bit late. And today there are no workers around uh, drilling in my wall, so maybe this is a, a better, um, I don't know, better setup for success. But there are other reasons why uh, the, I might not have such a good uh, success with my SSH backend. Uh, I'll get back to that first I'm going to show you a little fun thing I I got yesterday I got a little link from my friend Steve where just need to make sure that I got everything up here on my screen uh, that's the chat <coughs> so okay I got a little link yesterday from my friend Steve to the Visual Studio 2019 uh, preview. Microsoft posted this, as you can see here in my browser. That that's the URL. If you want it, I'll paste it in the chat. And it was just fun because in their um, marketing blurb here, they're describing something. They have uh, support for uh, for other. Well, I'm not sure exactly what it is. It doesn't matter, but it's. Um, it's curl here. So they highlight curl in their screenshot here on the screen. Boom. Fun. Okay, that was just that. It was just fun because they um, highlighted our product. Down, down, bam, gone. So yesterday I worked on the new. Uh, SSH backend for curl for using Wolf SSH. Jesus, I have a problem with these letters already. The new SSH backend with Wolf SSH, not SSL on, on in either of those. SSH. And um, right, and I I ran into some issues with it uh, that was. I think you noted that on the stream yesterday, if you saw it. And then I went to, after the stream was done, I went to the the GitHub project for Wolf SSH. What happens? Um, and I filed these three issues. problem to find the correct zoom level on the screen. Uh, so yeah, I found uh, I filed a problem with um, I got build errors really with GCC 8.3 and they turned out to be pretty much false positives I think, but still they they um, cause build errors with a just plain ordinary vanilla build which is annoying for, for me and for anyone else, so I filed that issue and I uh, filed an issue about uh, another warning about C90 compliance. <clears throat> you know, we build curl with C89, C90 compliance, so it uh, warns about something in their headers. And I filed uh, an uh, issue about portability with uh, one of the functions in the API. And all of these three have been addressed since yesterday. Uh, well, I, fi I filed them after the stream yesterday, right? So they all of the three ones are addressed within uh, 12 hours or so. So pretty good turnaround, I'd say. One of them is already merged into master. And the, uh, I approved this, uh, the, the pull request to fix the F set FD issue they actually fix it by creating a new API that is more portable. So <clears throat> it's not a fix for us short term, but um, long term. 
that was also just some uh, the fix for the GCC thing was just uh, juggling some code and and the the C90 compliance was also changing an enum to defines instead. But I'll show you where I ended up yesterday. Um, so in my code, oh sorry, what you're seeing here on screen is my work. <coughs> Should I context switch here now? Yes. Let's just switch to this instead because I have it on screens. So let's keep it on this. So uh, Wolf SSH on pause, then go switch over to my parallel um, transfers build. And my parallel transfers build, it looks like this. So this also isn't reloaded. So I the um, CI builds reported back yesterday. Well, most of them are green, as you can see, lots of green things here. But I got usually among our CI builds, the Travis one is the most important one and it says red here. And if we go to the, if we fire up it, fire it up in a new tab and we check it out, we can see that it's this build, the coverage build here. And I know why it fails because the coverage build is the only build that runs um, torture tests. And among the torture tests here, we can see test 1400. It tests the dash dash lib curl option and it runs into memory leak when doing so. No goodie. So I reproduced that memory leak here. So this is the parallel transfers branch. It says so over here in, in Emacs. Uh, and um, interesting, if I put my windows like this, I can move the mouse pointer and you can see it moves almost straight over. Uh, I've mentioned it before, but the windows you see on the on the live stream, there are, there are uh, cherry picked into the stream. So they're actually not put positioned like that on my screen. So you see a selection of windows. Uh, that I've just made uh, visible for you. So I have more windows on my screen than you can see. <coughs> uh, oh well. Uh, so here is the torture failure with Valgrind. So I can see the more detailed leak here. I can so you see exactly. So I can see, well, a call stack for the leak, which helps me, but it's not terribly easy just because of that but easy so it says here easy source add that's this function so that's that is leaking or within that and that is calling append which is that and so something How can that leak? Hmm. I thought that was pretty battle tested, but right it says here 39 and then it does this which is um, that's the lib curve function okay so this doesn't fail oh, no, okay now I'll, I'll switch the buggy method to instead do the old-fashioned way or the way I prefer so I 
go to this mem debug and this is the line of code that returns when the I'm just going to make sure that I can reproduce the exact well this is the line of code that returns when the, when the torture test decides to return a pr return an error so I can set a breakpoint there and I can single step from that point to know exactly what happens in the case of the error or <coughs> when it returns a memory out of memory response so in this case it's share in it Thirty-nine. Okay, it fails to make a share. That's a good clue. And the back trace, stack trace, it's tool operate twenty-one forty-two. Oh, ha, yes. And I see it. It doesn't free this stuff, I believe, when it does a return. It should call this. Okay. Well, I can prove my theory by adding cleanup. Uh, no, not really. But uh, but this is uh, since this torture test then made uh, this function basically return null here. So it returned a failure for the share in. It returned a null and it detected it here and it would return out of memory. But when it returned out of memory here, it didn't r uh, free the resources that are previously allocated in this function. So it needs to call the cleanup function to free up memory before it returns. That's the bug here. Uh, as I think, at least. I'm pretty sure of it, actually. So, I'll just rebuild and re-verify and see if it happens again or not. Um, I'll just rebuild the tests too. So I can then rerun exactly that case, did that exact case. Did it work? Did it work? Did it work? What happens? What happens? Yes, it works. So okay, that exact case is fixed. So I'll... What did I do? Yeah, right. Uh, so I'll, I'll just run through the entire torture test on test 1400 yeah <laughs> and when it comes to this uh, this pretty big rewrite that I that I'm doing for the parallel transfers I have been down this one I started pretty long time ago I, I mean I think I started a few months ago on this work actually and then I just paused it for a long time because it felt so overwhelming and then got back to it a few weeks ago and I started and when I got everything to build, like maybe a week ago or so, I I, yes, I had, I believe I started out with 58 um, tests failing. And since that moment a week ago, I've been just, you know, fixing one, one failure at a time, 58, 49, 42, 37, and then bam, bam, down, down to zero. And, and, uh, and down to zero it was, and then I fi uh, filed it as a PR then, so then uh, the um, CI systems on GitHub started having a go at it, and then of course the CIs find more than my local tests, so 
since I made it a PR, I've been struggling to get bugs or test failures removed one by one, like this. And yep, it feels good to nail it down one by one, and it really shows how good our tests are for this and how good our CI setup is for this. So, uh, still a bit of a struggle at times, of course, because it feels like maybe I should just write better code to start with instead of just fixing up everything afterwards. But uh, hey, that's that's life. So as you can see, the, the watcher chats are really slow. My machine is not the fastest on earth, but it's a decently fast machine. And it takes, so it run, reruns this test now 249 times. And it uses Valgrind here. So, and Valgrind makes everything slower. So it runs, you know, and it goes further and further for every time. So uh, it'll do this, it'll run a lot of code a lot of times. Um, Eventually, of course, it'll succeed and everything will be fine and dandy. And then I'll push that to the CI and we'll see what happens. The CI, of course, takes a long time, so uh, we won't see the end result of this um, today in the stream. But my, my, my idea here is to go back to this little... Well, it'll, it'll keep running there. Uh, in my <coughs> PR here, as I have I marked this as a work in progress um, pull request because it's certainly not ready for uh, much anytime soon. I have this little thing I make sure it handles torture tests fine, which I'm hoping I'm getting closer to with this fix. And then, ability to run transfers in parallel. So, are you ready for some parallel transfers in curl? That is the curl tool, of course, because parallel transfers work fine already with libcurl, and that is what is so good with this, because we only need to change the curl tool code. Libcurl itself already does all what we need. Or maybe, as I will get back to at a later point in time, maybe we need to extend libcurl tools a little bit to make sure that we can um really take a full full advantage of 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 it <coughs> so while the torture tests are running go back to my emacs here so now in the curl command line tool we have this little function called create transfers. You, of course, don't have to care much about this, but this is how it works. Um, the create transfers function, it, it, here's the main invocation of it, loop through the lists of given URLs. It basically goes through whatever you uh, typed on your command line or configure config file, whatever you call it, with dash capital K. And it creates a linked list of transfers. And for every transfer, it uh, creates an easy handle and everything. So it, it sets up a linked list of transfers to perform, which could be one transfer, 100 transfer, 1,000 transfers, really only limited by amount of memory. Mm, I hope. Yeah, that should be it. It shouldn't really, there's no particular limit to number of transfers. And once done, and this is, this is what's important because it didn't work like this before. So it first set up a list of all transfers that it, it'll do on this command line invoke. Oh, well, with a sort of, yes, well, maybe that's not exactly true, but uh, basically true. <laughs> Uh, and then it performs the transfers in this loop. Bam, here. Uh, so it basically is, it does a pre-transfer, so set up before the transfer. It, it makes a curl easy perform to actually perform the transfer. And it uh, invokes post-transfer that then does all the magic it needs to do after a single transfer has completed. And then it removes the transfer from the linked list, blah, blah, blah. 
uh, some magic if it needs to abort a loop or not, and it goes back and, and it performs the next transfer. So this is this is doing all the transfers in a serial manner, just how like the curl command line tool always did it. But this then assumes a serial behavior. I'm going to do a condition here now that can do all this procedure in a parallel uh, approach instead of serial. So that is what I'm going to do now. Parallel transfers opposed to serial transfers. And, and yeah, sure, we can't just, you know, change everything to parallel without breaking things. So the default, uh, I just want to emphasize this to stress it because, so the default behavior curve will still be, oh, do you see it, uh, touch her, okay. So it, the, yeah, the default behavior of curl will still remain serial even with this change, but with this uh, coming change that I'm, I'm going to do in a, in a minute here, we, we can at least opt in to do, uh, allowing curl to do transfers in parallel. So you can basically tell curl, transfer these 25 files and it can do them all in parallel at the same time, which I think is pretty cool. And doing that also opens up uh, the ability to do even more fun things, which uh, we can go into also, that's maybe not today, but you know, like supporting HTTP to push better and uh, well, you know, wh why not add transfers? While you have a curl running in the background already transferring all those 25 transfers, you can do another curl command that adds transfers to the already ongoing curl perhaps. And yeah, we have some fun ideas that we can work on later. But first, let's get the basic parallel transfer going. Fix up the test 1400 memory leak. So, beep, 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 beep. Uh, wait a second, I'm just going to have to push my little fix up there, uh, so the CI gets going. L let's just see that it's CI over here, blah, 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 I'll just reload this. So GitHub pull request 3804, yes, they have now restarted the CI jobs, bam, so they will, that's the fix I just pushed. I tend to push fix-ups like this for a while and then um, I go back and, and uh, squash them all together. So when I, uh, I probably squash them and rebase them at some point because I, it'll be a lot of more fixes. Because as you can see, we have at least six outstanding tasks for this PR before it's ready. So, okay. Uh, then that will f go on for a while. Go back here. Um, well, yeah, um, I'm talking parallel transfers here. I don't actually say that we are using multiple threads. libcurl supports actually an infinite number of parallel transfers in the same thread. So they're not going to use a lot of extra threads. They are possibly for name resolving, but not for actual transfers. So, so um, it'll continue to use just one thread, which is uh, both good and bad. It could potentially be faster by using more threads, at least if uh, if the transfers are CPU bound, which they actually rarely are, but still it would be. Um, but uh, <laughs> let's not <laughs> get ahead of ourselves. Let's get uh, the basic, let's get basic parallel transfers first. And then we can discuss how we can improve parallel transfers to be better going forward. So, <clears throat> I might uh, do it like this, just to well, it's not wrong, right? M many people, most people, at least, they think of parallel things as done in multiple threads be because that's the sort of the easy way to do it. But that's not necessar necessarily the only way to do it, and it's not the way the curl multi-interface does it. The curl multi-interface does 
things in parallel in the same thread. It'll just do a tiny little bit on one transfer and then the tiny little bit on the next transfer and then we iterate around all the transfers that we have. Uh, so yeah, it works out really good and it can scale to a, a vast amount of transfers. <coughs> and actually libcurl has two different uh, multi-interfaces so it actually works better if if we're going up be beyond m maybe 100 or 1000 concurrent transfers we have another api that actually is better for for a really large scale uh, number of tra uh, concurrent transfers but i think in the curl command line tool case i think we shouldn't uh, overdo it i don't think we need to go up to the thousands of, of, of uh, concurrent transfers i don't think that's what users want bam so result serial trans transfer serial transfer Maybe. And actually what has shown uh, when you're talking about uh, an extreme amount of par uh, parallel transfers, like if you go up the, the famous C10K, you know, 10K concurrent transfers, if you do those with 10K threads, you have 10K stacks and you have 10K buffers everywhere. So it, it's a pretty big overhead to do parallel transfers at that volume. Okay, serial transfers, blah, blah, blah. Let's see here. Uh, I'm missing a lot of variables, local variables that I need. So let's do it this way. I just add one that I know is missing and now I'm rebuilding and now uh, blah, blah, blah. And I get some, com ah, no arguments at all. That's uh, good. Uh, well, not good. Uh, I probably need global. I probably need config. Because they're passed into this function, so I think they're going to be needed. So, yeah. And share, yes. And share. I'm not going to get into the specific exact details of everything this is working because, um, <laughs> well, it, it would take away too much of my actual coding, but um, I had to change some things in, in the um, command line tool code to make this actually work. So now we use the libcurl API slightly differently from the curl command line tool. So the curl command line tool is, is pretty separate from the library or it's a user of the library. So, um, and the library of course has an API that can, is used by uh, a numerous applications in, in different ways. And now we're using it differently from the command, command line tool. So we're using more Um, now we're using one easy handle for each transfer, which we didn't do before. Previously, we just used one, well, not one, but pretty much one easy handle at a time. Um, so now we're using many more easy handles, but instead we're using the share interface. So we're sharing a lot of data between these uh, easy handles to make sure that things like DNS cache, par uh, connection cache, 
uh, cookies and stuff are shared between all these easy handles. Oh, and then it built successfully. So maybe the serial transfers function is working. Let me just <coughs> one by one or all at once. So let me just me uh, verify then. So <laughs> I create I read remodel that into a function call. So the, the, I think it'll, it works because it wasn't that complicated, but I'm just going to run test one to make sure that if this works, I think it works. I could I could run one more test, uh, a random test number two, three, four, very random. Does it work? Does it work? Yes, it works. So let's say it works. <coughs> uh, it's not too important. We're going to test everything soon anyway. So now, 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 let's do this. This. If so, if we're going to do the transfers, time to actually do the transfers. If there's going to be some sort of option here somewhere, config um, parallel. Not sure exactly how. Let's start out like this. If they're not parallel, they're done in serial, right? Like before, like now. And if they're done in parallel, we're going to do it like this instead. Serial transfers. Nah, let's do parallel transfers. <coughs> okay, we don't have any function like that, so let's create one. Let's let's clone clone the. I'm cloning the beginning of the serial one just to make sure that I have the basics right and I add a return code. Okay, so then we'll iterate through all the transfer. Uh, not all the transfers, but let's start out adding all the transfers. I mean, all the transfers are going to be silly if we have like a million transfers. Uh, we can't do a million at once. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, um, I'm looking forward to a lot of uh, weird options here to control curl how to do, how many parallel transfers to do at the same time. And also if you're, f for example, asking for a hundred transfers from the same site, should you really fire them up all at once? You know, it's more or less a denial of service attack to so just do 100 connects at the same time. It's not that terrible, perhaps, but perhaps we should also have some uh, slow, uh, I mean, some delay if you're using the same host. So I'm not sure, but <clears throat> let's, um, let's take one step at a time first First, 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 let's do this. So it's the name isn't serial there, the name is parallel. First, it's th it makes a pre-transfer, it just sets up some things. And then instead of doing the transfer immediately, I'm going to make in, in the um, the curl easy perform function in libcurl is actually already a wrapper around the multi interface. Look at this easy to transfer. The easy, it, it already sort of uses the multi interface internally. So to make things a little easier for myself, I'm going to copy this code and, and uh, just massage it for the command line code purpose instead of the library purpose. So let's just paste that to start with. Okay. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, let's first start out like this. Boom. Pre transfer. If we're not done, we're still running. No, okay. No, I'm sorry. Uh, let's undo a, little, a few steps. Undo there. I think we're going to do like this. In in the loop, 
in the loop we're going to do back to looking at how how easy perform is doing it it creates a multi handle right because we don't have any multi so yes we need a multi handle So we need to use the multi-interface. So in the multi-interface we have a multi-handle and we create it like this. It's very easy. There. There it is. Bam. Of course we need to handle that it, if it doesn't work we need to return. It's basically out of memory. No, there are red switches on my keyboard, that's why you hear it. No, but it's actually not that um, it's not that loud keyboard. Um, it's a pretty nice keyboard. It's, uh, I don't know what it's called even. F-U-N-C, Funk something. I blogged about it a while ago, so you can Google it up on my blog and Funk. Um, it has a lovely red backlight on it too. I I did uh, I logged my uh, keys presses for a while and, and counted and I just I actually back then a few years ago I I uh, did I think 7.5 million key presses per year good to know in case you were wondering how many key presses do we actually do during a year uh, okay uh, I do the pre transfer and then we do this we add to the multi handle. That's the multi handle. We have for each transfer we have a easy handle. So we just do this. See, we just add this handle to this handle. Easy peasy. <laughs> yeah, um, I I don't I am. Um, I have this similar problem because where I sit, or if I if, if I lean backwards, I can point in that in that direction. Both my kids they have one room each, so they're just a few meters away from there. And in during my um, night sessions doing coding, my wife is sleeping over there in, in our bedroom over there. So I'm between their bedrooms. So yeah, I wouldn't survive with a really loud keyboard. So I think if you can hear my keyboard, it's because my mic is pretty close to the keyboard. <coughs> Not because it's particularly loud, so they, they actually manage to sleep pretty good while, while I do things. Can I also say that someone mentioned to me just now on Twitter that I created uh, an, an, um, a, an account yesterday on my stream with a known password, <laughs> well, a username and a password that I showed you on, on the live stream, but um, it's okay. Um, um, where were I? I'm talking too much. So, okay. We're back to adding the multi-handle. I'm going. To, uh, um, this is going to iterate through all the transfers that we're going to do. One, two, three, four, five, one hundred, ten thousand, and add multi-handles to the multi-handle. And of course, I think it's called M code. Uh, I'm going to verify that it actually works because if it doesn't work. We're in a world of sadness. Probably won't work to just return there, but let's do that for now. So we iterate over them. We add all the multi uh, easy handles to the multi handle. Um, and then go through the 
transfers like this. So we add them all and here we wait for some activity and then we do blah, blah, blah. multi perform that performs all the transfers. We do some weird magic here to t time out in case there's nothing to wait for. But um, let's ignore that for now. M code, that's the. Oh, well, maybe we should just do this M code. And if I compile, what does it say? A lot of complaints. Redeclaration. It's okay. Boom. Ah, oh, re. Unused. Yeah, it's in the wrong place, and we haven't really gotten to that yet. But we need to use the retry later on. I can just remove it from now. So the sometimes it's. it's <laughs> When I use very picky compiler options, it makes it uh, slightly annoying at times when, <laughs> when I write sloppy code because I need to fix things then and not be as sloppy. Implicit declaration. Yeah, it's supposed to be lowercase c. How did that go? Uh, okay. Uh, and I think this curl weight ms, that's not a it's not an exported function, so let's see what I'll do. Maybe, okay, to make things easier for me. There's this slight little issue that <laughs> if you do things with the multi interface and it opens, <coughs> when it's supposed to do a transfer and it uh, resolves a hostname and it uses the threaded uh, DNS resolver, so it uh, resolves the hostname in the uh, in, an, in a new thread. There's no socket for the current select to wait for, so it doesn't know what to wait for, and so then you can't wait for anything. So you have to just wait a short period and check again, and again, and again, and again. And that is. And instead of doing that as a busy loop, you really should wait for a short period of time. And that is what this is for. It's a complicated thing because how long how long should you wait? You don't want to wait too long because then you slow down the transfers and you've been waiting longer than you should. But you don't want to sleep too short either because then you're wasting a lot of CPU by just looping like crazy. <coughs> so where typically libcurl offers a function that says uh, a timeout function, so it can actually slowly increase the, the timing, the, the period that it'll wait. <coughs> okay. Hmm. This copied function that I'm just ripping like this, it actually isn't ideal because it uses a lot of internal libcurl stuff to function. Okay, let me then let me do the other way around. Wait, sleep. I'm just doing a really stupid. really stupid do nothing just to make sure that just to progress and I'll get back to to that function later <coughs> just because I want to get the sort of main uh, transfer logic done before I too many arguments
the num fts uh, it will be populated with the total number of file descriptors on which interesting events occurred yeah the api isn't really now i remember that's why in internally we actually use a modified version of this api which actually i've been considering to expose in the in the to the sort of external api as well but i haven't eh. let's let's do like this for now hey unused variable return code yeah we don't need that i think but okay we've added a bunch of easy handles we wait we perform them and only read still running if returned okay So we do this, and this 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 uh, loops around all the transfers, and uh, um, why does it do? Oh, right, this is made for the easy perform case, which isn't really ideal. So let's do it like this instead. We read. If if this returns okay, we check here if anything happened, and this function returns basically messages about uh, current transfers. You know, this could current multi-perform could then potentially drive a hundred transfers, and if one of those transfers, or two, or three, or five, or twenty-two of them completed, this function will return a message about what happened or one message at a time. So every time we call this, it'll return a new message or no message. So basically we do like this. Um, while message. So if there was a message, we, do it, we try it again. done no done no done okay while running is also interesting since this is a variable that basically just says the number of con still uh, active alive transfers so how many transfers are still running uh, good to know right so if if that is if that is zero <laughs> we we can um, stop the loop because then there's no point in looping anymore because all the transfers are done break uh, else if m m code or not still running. It's a bit weird. Why do we do it like that? Okay, we have a condition there if but done. Done isn't done just because one transfer completed. Result here is the return code for that individual transfer. So that's for this particular transfer. And I think sometimes I haven't used my own API enough to remember the exact details, but I was going for this. I can also get the easy handle out. So I know ha, I don't know. Okay, 
I have a new idea. So when this transfer is done, how do I know which of these um, transfer structs it concerns? I can get the easy handle out, but that's not good enough for me. I want the I want my uh, per transfer pointer. So this is what I will do. I might change this later, but let's do curl easy set opt because we have this fancy little thing called curl opt private so I can set a private pointer in the curl easy handle so like this I don't think this can actually fail uh, but let's do it like that uh, so I'm, I'm setting a private pointer it doesn't actually do anything for curl it just stores that this pointer so since I add then a bazillion handles to the multi-handle and then do I do the this is the loop doing the the transfers uh, and one one of those transfers have completed here's the result in in the ideal case of course it, it succeeded fine and so then I need to know which what's the per what's this per transfer pointer for the transfer that completed so then we have curl easy get info <coughs> and we have the if I mul no ec get info is the function call <coughs> no sorry um multi info read was the one I was thinking about <coughs> I mean then um here it is the multi info read it gets a message back like this in the return and that's this is the struct that we get back and it contains this easy handle so I can do like this the easy handle here is in message easy handle easy handle even <coughs> okay the easy handle and its result Assuming, well, it doesn't really matter if it works or not. If it, it did go okay, no, we can still do it like this because we. So then we, from the easy handle, we use the get info function, which works like this. Just again, and uh, takes the handle, and you, I can extract information from the handle. So it's not curl opt. Then it's called info, and I can use the pr curl info private and extract uh, struct per transfer I don't want to uh, return it in the same variable because it will be weird ended ended there so I get the pointer back the same so I know exactly which transfer that ended this can of course re <laughs> wait weird okay ah let's uh, mm, okay mm, it'll be something to chew on so let's let's assume this always works i bet it doesn't but okay so i get the pointer back and ended now is the transfer that ended so we can, for example, we can remove the handle from the multi, um, from the multi handle. Basically, stop, remove it from there because it's done now. We can take it off. It doesn't matter. If, uh, uh, doesn't hurt. But we want to remove it so we can uh, save up some resources and uh, add a new one potentially. Since so this. And this is the end of one transfer, so w this is going to end up at some point be the beginning of another transfer. For, for example, if we limit the number of concurrency to, let's say, 30 or uh, 100 transfers, and when we come here, we, we decrease the number of, of number of uh, transfers to 99, and we can add a new one. So we would then just basically do this. <coughs> so. We remove the multi-handle and we also perform the 
post transfer. Here, the post transfer call for this transfer that ended. This could work soon. Oh, they are right. <laughs> There's no option for parallel. Okay. Mm. You know, there's this struggle in curl uh, among uh, command line options. How many command line options can you actually cram into a, a single tool? A lot of, t a lot of, well, here are all the command line options, curl supports. There are 221 right now, I believe. I actually have a counter in the release notes. 221. But among all those 221, there are, what is it, 55 something that are user, that are using single letter short options. <coughs> There's no limit to the number of command line options, but there are a limit to the number of how many single letter uh, command line options you can have. So we have just a few letters left that you that we can use. And I'm thinking here, I'm thinking maybe I should spend one. I think we have two left. Should we spend one for enable parallel transfers? I'm thinking maybe, yeah. And for that, we have the excellent letter called Z or Z, capital. So the, the, we have the lower case for time condition. I'm thinking capital for parallel. Doesn't really, I know, and uh, you know. Uh, so why Z for parallel? Um, it's uh, it's a stretch, but it's we have Z and we have W. Uh, Z W Z. I think Z parallels. No, uh, and we don't need it. It's a boolean. I think. Well, that's an excellent bike shedding uh, topic, right? We can. Uh, we can <laughs> we can argue about what's the best p command line option to use for this, <laughs> but yeah, I think it's worthy of a single character because I think this, uh, I mean, assuming this works out as, as the way I want it to, I think it could be a fairly popular thing, and it could be one that you want to enable easy with this really quick option. So let's go with dash capital Z. Okay, that's not enough. Uh, if we can mimic the the um, the command line option parsing code is home cooked and not the most straightforward in the world, but it's not too complicated either. Let's see a bool copy another boolean. So I can, I can type either, and I let's just see how we dis disable EPSV. Right, we just do it like that. That's pretty pretty easy. So parallel set to toggle. Boom. So this um, <coughs> the the support for boolean then is, makes you you can actually use dash no parallel if you want to explicitly say don't do it parallelly because then you can you can in in theory put this in uh, in your 
dot curl or rc or in a config file i always want to do it in parallel and then use the no parallel version to switch it off if you if you're so inclined i'm not sure i would have advised doing that but it's possible mm, okay bool parallel parallel <laughs> sort of do, do parallel transfers no uh, useless comment avoided okay I think it works do you think it does anything do you th what happens parallel what will it do First, the retry doesn't work because continue is continuing the wrong loop. And no, and I think um, retry is going to be needed to be handled differently. But okay, I don't do re. I don't need to do. I'm not cleaning things up properly. So let's. So then this, <laughs> okay, this is exciting times, right? So here's dot Z for parallel transfers. And um, if I would, not sure I'm going to show you my, my secrets, but I'm going to just make sure that I have a test file Presumably just one that downloads more data than 100 bytes because a very small download will just be over in a blink anyway. Uh, hello. No. So I'm going to just uh, check here. Um, right. I have a fun setup. I can do a a few very very large transfers maybe or maybe not so I can just verify that it works so if I do local host here here are my I can do this 512 meg perhaps and I can save them in dump does it work it works uh, local host yes pretty fast <clears throat> so um, I could cap the speed to make it slower but I was more going for this and maybe uh, you know I do two of them one one but why do them one by one when you can do it parallelly <laughs> uh, yeah good times uh, out of memory. Wrong there. Okay. What a what a smashing success there. The first parallel transfer. Uh, no, boom. What? The same. Okay then. Mm, let me. Boom, single step. Oh, no, did not do the same mistake there. There, it, it does return M code. Had it already. Something is wrong there. That's not good. How did that happen? So P riddle per curl per curl. Just get the pointer value printed to standard R and let's see what it says. It's, does it really show the same one twice? I oh, will presumably it does. 
Yep, it does. Very curious. No, it's because it do <laughs> it doesn't change. <laughs> Stupid, the loop is wrong. Because in the in the original loop, it doesn't work like that. So okay, we can actually do a per 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 next, I think, so that it'll just iterate over the list. Um, the way it's supposed to, instead of just sticking to the same entry many times. So yeah, it helped us detect that little problem. So okay, uh, parallel, 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 boom. That was pretty cool. Uh, maybe I should use two different outputs. Well, it crashes, but uh, ignoring that, what happens? And, and um, Tana, different sizes. <laughs> Ooh, I wonder. That's because it crashes when one the first one completes, right? But, but, parallel transfers. That that was the first set of parallel transfers. And uh, as you can see, the progress meter is fun or uh, for some definition of fun, totally broken uh, uh, could also be another way to say it. So yeah, I need to implement a, a better progress thing here because do <laughs> doing more doing more parallel transfers is going to be really fun. Are you ready? Boom. Yep, totally, totally fine. Okay, assertion. Let's fix the bug. Let's fix that bug first. Then, uh, then, 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 bite the next bullet. So, <coughs> we are doing parallel transfers. Yay, here's the delete transfer. And that's the, ooh, yes, it's completely wrong. Where is it? <laughs> yes, it is. It's the, lead, uh, the uh, it's the name is ended, the one it's supposed to remove. From, from And we can ignore what it returns. <clears throat> okay, that has a higher chance of being right. And I think we can remove this printf because it's now useless. All those, uh, we found a mistake, so I don't need to see that they are actually different. They are actually different already. I knew that because we do the serial transfers basically using those curl handles already. So I knew that they actually were correct somewhere. So, okay, one or uh, eight, let's go with two. One, two, three, boom. Oh, and that didn't look very good. It just stopped. Okay, so first get rid of the dump files, do it again. Hmm, what's happening? I'm just pausing them to see w where they went. Oh, we're having a problem to end now. Do we? Why do we do that? Because we have an else for the break. Uh, okay, I can do it like this, perhaps. It's a little bit of a cheat, but if we set still running to something then other from the beginning, which is and still running. 
So we keep keep the loop going. While there are actual transfers alive. <coughs> there. Remove those and parallel transfers. Blah blah blah. Parallel, parallel, parallel. Are they are they the same size? Are they the same content? They are. It worked in parallel. Um, there. <clears throat> okay. Only one hour into the stream and we have parallel transfers in the curl tool. Pretty cool, I think. I think this is going to be pretty cool. <clears throat> it's, a, it's a bit... Uh, some rough edges still, but uh, but the... I mean, the foundation is here. Now, now we can just... Um, polish this into something that is actually good. So I am going to save the retry thing because that's boring. So I'm, um, I'm going to then instead, what am I going to do? I'm going to make sure that we actually I'm going to, do, to actually do a uh, cleanup properly because I didn't clean up the multi handle. So this now it adds all all transfers at once. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, Right now, the tests, they're not doing anything in parallel, right? So the tests are just going to work right now. So <laughs> it is going to be a little bit complicated to run, uh, to, to do proper concurrency tests. Um, I think our test HP server is a bit stupid when it comes to concurrent uh, requests, but I, I need to think about that. But uh, because, yeah, I need, I need tests for this. Um, so yeah, I haven't uh, really uh, worked that out yet. But and yes, I'm going. To, I'm going to have options for concurrency limits. I, pre I'm pretty sure that I need co a whole busload of different options for different uh, parallel concurrency uh, tweaking options. But I'm, I'm. I'm. I'm also. I'm also very. What do you say? Um, I don't want to add options and things ahead of time that nobody actually cares for. So I'd rather start out with something a bit uh, raw and uh, maybe not as configurable as you m might want it. And then go with what do we really need to, what do people ask for, what 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 is really, <laughs> what makes it unusable or whatever. So if I, I'll, I'll get the basics there, I'll get the parallel option I need some limitations and I, I'm pretty sure I need some sensible defaults so that if you add a, a, a bazillion transfers I won't do them at once and I also um, wanted to make sure that you can actually possibly, possibly limit the number of connections used instead of transfers so, so if you're doing I want to get 200 files of the same HTTP2 server you can actually get them basically using one connection and just doing a bazillion concurrent transfers over the same connection. And that would possibly f be fine, but not if you do it HP1 and do that many TCP connections. So yeah, the, uh, I'm, I'm certainly interested in your feedback and ideas for what options we need to control, limit, or uh, sort of configure parallel transfers when you do them. Uh, imagine that you set up a script that you want to download uh, stuff and you just make one humongous command line. These are all the transfer I wanted done. Yeah, that's really convenient, but maybe doing 200 concurrent ones is uh, a bit inconvenient. <clears throat> yeah, I might, I, I, we have options for libcurl so that I can actually limit um, I can limit max number of, of connections to a single host and I can limit the max number of connections uh, and I can ask limit to do that. 
um, I can ask, oh, sorry, I can, uh, I'm reading and talking and thinking at the same time. Uh, I can ask libcurl to do those limitations, but I, I also prefer to not, well, here's a little trick here. I don't want to put all the limits into libcurl. I want to, because if you add a, a million transfers with curl, I don't want to put those million into libcurl and say, hey, I just want to do them two at a time, because that's going to queue up then. 999,998 transfers in libcurl instead of doing it in the curl tool. So I think it's better to do some of the queuing in curl itself. But, but again, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I'm go, um, let's do a few things at a time here. So first, let's get parallel transfers going. And I, I want to make sure that I clean up everything and when it cleans when it's cleaning up fine i want to i'm going to take a stab on the um, fixing the progress meter because the progress meter is so obviously completely garbage right now when doing more than one um and when i have a progress meter i can go over to my little uh where is it where is my i have too many Windows. So it handled torture tests. Well, I'm sure that this will break some more torture tests, but it doesn't matter. We can iterate through this. So I have made it run transfers in parallel now. So this is this actually checks out. So I want to change the order then. So I'm going to change the progress bar here and test cases, of course, and documents for the new parallel option. Oh, yeah, I need to document everything, of course, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. I think I have I have this grand plan for for further features to to make sure that you can actually add a transfer to transfers to an already running curl. So basically, like that, so you can get curl running and then with another pipe or another curl command line add transfers to the already running curl. But um, th that again is more fancy stuff that. Uh, I think I need to get the basics done first and make sure that it actually works decently and then go with the bells and whistles and, and fancy stuff. <clears throat> Start out with cleaning up the multi-handle properly. Oh, right, maybe I could. Basic parallel transfers. Just wanted to commit that it was a pretty big commit. Uh, I mean, I'm, it's not. I'm not going to leave those commit managers like this. I'm not going to. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to leave the commit messages like this that that I've submitted so far in this branch. But I'm going to rebase and, and squash them and do better. I'm just doing this while development because um, <clears throat> getting things out of the way. Yeah, handling a lot of uh, parallel transfers really begs the question if, if we need something more fancy, maybe a more fancy UI too for, for you know, showing off more transfer at the same time, because maybe just a, a single line progress meter for handling a thousand concurrent transfers isn't good enough. I don't know. But uh, uh, also, I don't... <laughs> I don't intend to spend the rest of my life tweaking parallel transfer system in curl. So, um, of course, I will gladly welcome help and, and pull requests to, to improve and, and make fancy features on this going forward. Uh, 
And I'm not badger. I'm badger because I can't spell. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so, oh, I didn't do the weight, so I have the weight. Oh, that's really terrible. I need to do the weight. Ah, let's do the progress bar first. Uh, so, to do the progress bar for parallel transfers, here's what we do. Haha, <laughs> this is going to be fun. It's going to be messy because the progress bar is per. It is done per transfer. Um. Yeah, I know I can update multiple lines, but updating multiple lines takes, you know, curses or whatever uh, library to handle uh, things on screen. And I've purposely avoided all that and stuck to just, you know, very basic escape codes that works with the dumbest VT terminal so that I don't need to care about it. And I just, that's why I update one line only, just carriage return at the end of line. So yeah, it is possible to go wild and do many lines and, and, and the curses, uh, text-based UI or, or everything. But, um, and yeah, sure, if someone wants to work on that, it, it could be fun, but I don't think that is for me. <clears throat> so, I'm going to add And now I don't remember. The callback prototype, but here it is. This is what it does for each individual transfer. So I have X amount of transfers and they will all call this callback individually. So I need to add it up. This is fun. It's okay. Boom. Here's what I get for each individual. Download total, download now. You upload total and upload now. No times or anything. I need to keep track of time myself. So I need to copy well, I wrote the internal progress meter myself, so I can copy a lot of data from or, or code from the from the libcurl progress meter to get that calculation stuff going. The, uh, but uh, <coughs> okie dokie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I need to, since, especially if I want to stage adding new transfers, so if you do 100 transfers, we add one transfer per second or something. Um, so I can only add progress data about what I know. And transfers that haven't started, they can't be part of it. So I can only add what I know. So I'll show what I know and the rest I'll ignore. And I'll, I need to calculate it. I'm thinking like this, that if I have a global counter for, for all of these, basically, and I set the data for each new one, and I remove the data that I previously knew for this transfer. Right, not all, all transfers know total length, which that, and that's, uh, that adds some extra fun to it, because what if you do three transfers Two of them have a known size and one is unknown. How many percent have you reached at a certain point in time? 
E <laughs> it's not possible to know, right? So maybe I need to. Mm, maybe I need some marker. Maybe I need some. Again, let me start out with something and. Uh, just doesn't show any uh, um, percentage at all for for uh, progress bars um if if i don't know if i don't know, don't know the total size there's no percentage and there's no estimated uh, time for for completion it's just show how far are we right now exactly so, so if, if if we don't know the current total we can still show you know current speed up to now and how many bytes have we transferred and how long time have we been running basically but but it's a different thing if well uh, presumably i need to basically switch to that if any of the transfers are unknown because if any of them are unknown we can't know of course we have a minimum amount we need to, that we need to go at least this much but there's going to be more uh, Difficult. Yeah, let's just go with what we have uploaded and downloaded so far. I can just do it. Uh, instead of getting stuck on doing the perfect thing, let's me just get s something that works. And and in order to avoid me having to iterate through, if what if you do so many uh, if you do 200 concurrent, I don't want to iterate through 200 transfers all the time to count the total. So I'm going to do a little magic to make sure that the total is updated. We update and remove the previously set value. So if all like this, if all download now, we add the download, the current download now and we remove the previous download now for this particular transfer. <clears throat> so I need to remember what we stored for this, what we add, we subtract. Um, so I need to remember what we added the last time. So I need to know the deal now from the last call. Right, so I need to store that deal now. Prev deal now is deal now, and I need the truck per transfer should probably be be the the data that I pass in here, so that I can access the transfer struct here, and so here's the download. This should, I mean, now I only show uh, showed off doing parallel downloads, but the entire logic works exactly the same for uploads. So it'll work the same way for uploads, even if I haven't proven or tested that yet. I'll just assume that it works like this as well. I'll, I'll get a chance later on to try it, try it out. And now I'm just adding the same logic so that this callback is done per transfer so this is potentially done hundreds well a lot of times so I don't want to do a lot of stuff here because it's going to be called a lot so they only up the update the global variables for how much have we downloaded how much have we uploaded so far and uh, without any times or anything I need to do the time I need to handle time myself and count time and 
doing <laughs> transfer speeds, uh, showing off transfer speeds is going to be, you know, the metrics. How fast is the transfer? That's going to be fun too, because that's also depending on when the transfer starts. Uh, okay, uh, let's not get uh, let's not uh, get ahead of ourselves there either. So. Yeah, I can mix uploads and downloads. I can, that's possible already. If, if you do uh, for, uh, I mean, curl already do, it already does uh, uploads and trans uh, downloads at the same time. But because you, when you're doing HTTP, it can actually send an upload at the same time the response is coming back. So it can actually do them both at, at the same time. So the, the transfer, uh, oh, sorry, the progress meter actually already handles that case even if it's possibly uh, not very common that you can actually s see it happening but you can uh, you can easily set up a test server that you just put a, a huge resource to that starts echoing back the resource while you're getting it or or put or post or something like that per transfer okay so here's here's for for progress bar or parallel, I can't spell. Curl of T prev DL now, prev UL now, does it compile? Uh, no, it doesn't because I was stupid. Do it in the right order as well. Pre. No, not pre. Per. Not pre or per, per maybe I should re consider renaming some of those, but maybe not. Unused parameter, yes. Because right now we don't care about that. Also, the, the progress meter has the uh, fun little or I, I would say the progress callback has a sort of fine funded side effect that that we can in the first callbacks that we get we might not know the size the total size but it might end up later because if you're for for example if we're doing an HTTP request uh, to a potentially you know uh, it takes a while to do the name resolve and the server is slow and it takes a while until response comes back it could potentially takes seconds until we actually know how much data we are going to get and then we don't know the deal total. So we might get unknown, 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 and then suddenly we know. So we need to take that into account too when we do the support for the total later, that we might not know, and then at some point we might know. Defined but not used, that makes sense. We call it transfer info because that's the name of the transfer info callback and there's also the pretty much all the callbacks in libcurl are or that's a function callback and there's a data pointer and the, the data pointer is the custom pointer passed to the user like this in this case the client p says here that's the pointer that's that we set here so it's a custom pointer to whatever we want and that's the way we access our struct for per transfer data so now potentially this what happens boom nothing because it doesn't output anything So if we're going 
with the most simple basics I'm not suggesting this is how to do it but it's fun to try it out total DL what did I call it? all all deal now just want to see if it actually updates and I can't spell either well we knew that uh, <coughs> okay it's uh, getting time for a little coffee break for me I think I need to run down and get some coffee here because uh, uh, yep huh <laughs> That was fun. And I think the total there was about, well, maybe I should get a larger transfer here. Let's go with the eight gigabyte. Bam. I think right now the updating of the terminal is what <laughs> makes this slower than it needs to be. But okay, it seems to work to some uh, some extent at least. <coughs> but uh, yeah, uh, uh <coughs> hang on there. I, uh, I'll be back in a f in a minute or so. Uh, I'll bring you to my fancy coffee break screen, and then um, back in a minute.
Okay. Uh, coffee. Code. And uh, something to do. So I need. Um, I have saved a lot of work. I need to make something nice of this um, progress bar here. <laughs> okay. <coughs> so maybe I think I need to do a, a new progress bar pretty much that isn't at all like the regular one because it's going to be hard to make the regular one appear sensible. So I think I'm going to more for number of transfers in progress, how many are left, how much data have we transferred, what's the speed, something like that. Uh, progress meter and right now it uses global variables anyway Yes, we have the f these fun TV now. I'm trying to remember since um, <laughs> uh, what kind of sometimes I, I I don't actually remember which functions we have we export or provide in the tool and that we have provided in the library alone. But this um, this is how we do current time in the command line tool. Current time might sound like a novel concept, but it's not it's not. Uh, it's not universally easy because it's different everywhere. So we need to have some um, portability layer or functions that provide the time. All right. <clears throat> now time should rather be We get now in the beginning. Here we start now, and then to the progress meter we pass in pointer to now. No, it's not now. It's no. It's more um, start. I was actually thinking about uh, sticking to the original same progress bar while we only have one transfer, but um, it's a bit tricky since one transfer now might be more than one transfer soon, or vice versa, we might go down to only one transfer. So I think I think do doing things asking for parallel transfers pretty much asks for a different progress bar. At least if we, I mean, I can also detect that if you ask for parallel transfers and you only provide one URL, I can just say, no, you won't get any parallel transfer. That's just a regular transfer because there's not going to be a difference. And then you can use the, the serial uh, transfer code path and you will get the regular progress meter. But I'm thinking more ahead here. If you, if we want a system where you can add transfers dynamically, so while running, while doing 22 transfers, we are doing, we add more transfers along the time, right? So then you can do, if you do one transfer and we add in the middle of that transfer, we add a second transfer. 
then it becomes really complicated if we're if we're going to have to switch progress meter in the middle. Um, I think a lot of a lot of things that transfer many resources concurrently they show them with different progress bars for each resource and not one for many um, but again i'm sure uh, this is uh, subject to bike shed a lot so i'm sure this whatever i do it will not be the end of it standard error is the right it's a global error system because you can actually redirect it so I can do I'm gonna check out the progress meter in libcurl it looks like this looks like this blah 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 This is how it makes it. <coughs> so I can do the same basically. I think yeah, this this are helper defines for knowing how to print f a curl of t variable, which uh, I, I, it's a bit of a inconvenient way, but uh, still the best we can do. I think I'm just copying that's the percentage uh, if we do like this total size max 5 data this is a convenient little function pretty big but it basically shortens the amount of data into five letters it makes it now I'm getting let's do a tool progress I'm gonna make it a separate a separate file because this is going to be a lot of tool operate is already a very big file I and mean, this is already a hundred lines of code
Bum ba dum ba dum ba dum. Progress. I'm going to need a header file because I need to make sure that operate can use it too. There, does it build? Probably not, because uh, I just cut out the function. So now, <coughs> and I pasted some junk as well. Okay, explicit declaration. Yeah, I need more, more include files. We use the print functions from libcurl2, but uh, not from, f not, um, well, never mind. The referencing pointer to incomplete type per transfer, yes, because we haven't included tool operate.h. And it's going to be more failures, yes, because obviously that file doesn't include its own let's see if I can fix that like this or not. the other way around then just <coughs> okay that there's a little bit of a chaos sometimes because I haven't been very very strict over where I put some of the some data at some points in in the command line tool because it's just a command line tool hmm where is it right there.
right that's the that's the one we wanted tool progress dot we haven't um, this isn't static anymore so we provide the prototype here in progress.h because this is the callback blah 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 outstruct declared progress meter yes that also needs to be put in the header and it's not a static It needs to include its own header file to get the prototypes. And TV now is in bet been a while since I did these things so I don't remember where where they are put and not all of them are done by me or were done by me either global yes global now we're getting close to something that global config global config is for as the name hints for global configurations just configurations that is set once for the entire command line for the entire uh, invoke of that curl thing typically verbose level or redirecting standard standard error that's also a verbose, uh, sorry, a global thing that affects the entire all transfers as opposed to just one transfer. All oh, right, we I stopped there. Mm. Max five data all yep, not enough. Bytes sorry. Bytes max five. Oh, that's a buffer. It needs a buffer too. Yeah. Char bo five max. And it's supposed to be six bytes. So it's five bytes. Five bytes plus zero zero trailer. <coughs> ah, now undeclared. 
Yeah, it wasn't now, was it? It's start. Start, and it's supposed to be global. Oops. What? Okay. There. What happened? So if I run this command line, can But, 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 what does it do? Why does it be... Ah! <laughs> because it's supposed to be a 3 there, wasn't it? Okay. This is the lib curl output. No, that was the percentage, and then it was, and the and the percent s. Yes, so yeah, I'm stupid. I'm really, really stupid because it's now a percent s only. There. Better. And what about now? Bam, 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 bam. There it is. Pretty fast too. But it's not actually working, right? Because I thought it would only do that if it had been running. Um, I, I thought it would only gonna update every second. That's much more than once per second. And now for some reason it doesn't stop. Yes, it did. This took a while. Hmm. Okay. Um. Well, that's fun. It <laughs> uh, 
newer, older. Only do that if the difference is a thousand. <laughs> Ah, uh, <laughs> you you are entirely correct because yeah, of course because it weighs uh, it's more than a second since it started. Oh, how silly! Yeah, good point there. Uh, it's good with this uh, real time uh, reviews. Thank you. Uh, of course, I need to update this. That's why the started is uh, probably a bad name for the variable. Now where is it? Um, progress meter there stamp but yes I need to update that maybe maybe like this hmm yeah so I only update it if it actually updates because <laughs> you know I, I want to avoid just getting the time a humongous number of times per second uh, progress so let's let's make it return a bool to start with So then we return true here and we return mm, return false here. And now there. I think maybe once per second is a little bit slow on the slow side, but um, we can tweak that later. I'll just save it for that, at least now. I'm going to check why it looks like it takes. I think it might. I mean, why it looked like it was sleeping. Uh, and now I'm trying to read the IRC chat at the same time. Uh, run, 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 run. And we can see there that we need a f um, a final update not only to have the final new line to, and we also prob probably need a forced update to do the, the last one because it looks better if, if the last update uh, you know when all transfers are done update the, the um, everything a final time I think we can do it. Like this bool forced. The forced or final. Because if it's the final, we can also do it like this. Final. Really? Yes, if so. Otherwise, nope. If final or because then I can do it like this, um, and then I don't need to update the stamp anymore, but here you can ignore it. I don't need to write like that but I do it 
to make it obvious that we don't care about return code in that case. So, will it update correctly now? No, because I forgot to true there. It's supposed to be false there, and I need to update bool final there then. What about that? Yep. And parallel transfers go. Ah. Why does it lock up? I'll need to fix that. Um, I'm just going to switch back to my there it is the <laughs> tiny bim up nice well it's a fairly basic progress meter I um, I, <laughs> I will agree to that <laughs> but it works for any amount of concurrent transfers So I we should add the number of transfers, how long time it has been going, uh, how fast it runs for the moment, moment being uh, weird definition. But in the, the regular curve progress meter has to last five seconds, basically. I think that is what you want. Uh, you want something, I mean, not the entire transfer because the entire transfer might be long and if the if your connection is busy or it goes up and down, you don't you don't want to know this average speed over the last hour. You want the uh, speed for the last time. <coughs> well, and I'm sure that if we know that the full size of the all the transfers. It would be nice to get an estimate for when the transfers are done. So um, mm, it'll be fun to make a sort of if all the transfers are actually of a known size, we can show the percentage and an estimated time of arrival and so on. <coughs> but okay, here's the foundation for for a progress meter for the parallel transfers. They don't mess up uh, like they did from the beginning. We have a, a basic progress meter works. So I wanna take a step back and look at my little list here. Ability to run transfers in parallel and I have implemented uh, well that might be a stretch, but uh, then at least it doesn't break everything So I'd say I have implemented a progress not a bar, but a meter so I also want to switch order so I want to document the option before I do test cases and I wanted to support and transfers in parallel, but I I'm going to start out with uh, with uh, a little uh, documentation uh, run. How do we document a command line option in curl? Well, we do them in this directory: docs command line ops parallel uh, the option name dot d for docs. It's just my own convention, it doesn't actually. And I'm gonna copy another option just to get something basic. Uh, uh, what's a good option to be base uh, to uh, I can just look here, docs command line. We have a few to select from. I'm just going to go no session ID. Uh, well, that's just what I 
perform perform transfers in parallel for all protocols. Uh, I presume or hope or wish and think uh, this will be added in 7.66.0. Uh, it's too late for the next release, the next release being on May 22nd being 7.65.0. Um, so it won't happen then, but um, it could, should happen in the one after. I'm tempted to call it version 8, just to make sure that we get the bump at some point, but I'm also not sure about that. So here it is, uh, prob possibly in 766.0, uh, and now it struck me that I need to see how we do it. The, yeah. There's a short, because this is an unusual one. It has a short option. Uh, so, uh, that's not bad. Um, curl perform the perform transfers in a con I better use the word parallel if I'm if the option is supposed to be parallel uh, in in parallel as opposed to the regular serial manner yeah that's what I wanted. I wanted to line wrap just that sentence, not the other. Uh, makes curl perform trans perform its transfers in parallel as as opposed as compared to the regular serial manner. Okay. Let's call that a documentation. It's um, the bare minimum at least, and then uh, get. Uh, help. This is how we do the help output. You know, if you go and if you go and do curl dash dash help blah blah blah, and you get a long list. This list is generated from that docs I just showed you, and you then you generate the output like this. Bam. And this struct is what we include here. And uh, it then sorts it accordingly and everything. So I'll just go parallel. It sorts it based on the long option name. So parallel apparently is the first one on beginning with a P. Ha. Okay. I should also add that to the commit. Oh, sorry. Get. Par parallel documented Woo Pretty good uh, outcome for uh, two hours and uh, 21 minutes of um, live streaming I say better than uh, usually So <laughs> Let's do this I'm, I'm now going to do the big and nasty rebase and just squash everything into one single commit because nobody cares about all those iterative commits. Now the commit looks like this. 1200 lines. 
and I'm just going to make sure that nothing was seriously screwed up there. And I'm going to push, force push that to the branch. Kaboom. There. So over in the browser land, I'm going to edit this. It handles the torture test fine. Uh, I'm going to make sure, I'm going to leave that maybe because I'm not sure. It now can do them. We have implemented a progress, implement a basic progress meter. I have done that. I have documented the new parallel option. My, uh, dash dash z para, parallel there uh, so I'll move down the ones that are not done well not necessarily done I hope the torture tests are running fine now but We'll see about that in in a while. Update comment. Boof. And if you look at the um, pull request list, it'll, this is the uh, branch then. So then you can see that it lists them at 7 out of 10 fixed or done. So yeah, 70% complete. I would say that 70% of the marks, I think this is actually more than 70% of the work done. Uh. <laughs> well, you know how long it takes for this to reach distributions. Uh, luckily, that is not my problem. That <laughs> I don't have to think about that too much. It'll take a long time. Um, First, it'll be first. I need to get it done so that I, we're sufficiently happy with it, so we can get it into the release. Hopefully, we do that by the time of seven sixty-six or zero. And seven sixty-six. Uh, let's just go with. I have um, this little document called the release process procedure. It lists uh, coming release dates. Since we do releases on every eight weeks, it's not good to know. So we, this. Parallel, tra parallel transfers are hopefully going to be shipping on July 17 in a release of curl. So and then, how long time does it take from a, a re curl release to end up in uh, in the popular Linux distros? A long time. If we look at how wh which are the latest in curl releases, I mean, in your distro today, which curl release do you have? And then you go to the I one of my favorite um, web pages on the curl site called Re curl releases and you can just go here and see how long time did it actually take for your distro to ship a curl release are you on uh, any 750 release then you know then you're basically a year off so if you're I don't I don't know exactly uh, where Ubuntu is, for example, uh, Ubuntu curl package. There. Boom. So, that's the one they just did or do or something, right? <laughs> right. So, if you're on 755, for example, yeah, then you know your. Uh, well, one and a half years off. So if you stick to that schedule, you'll have uh, parallel transfers by the winter of 20 or New Year's 2021 or so. Yay! <laughs> and, and of course, um, I think everyone is uh, from ever anywhere from zero to um, up to two years behind. Uh, I think Windows 10 is also stuck on 755 or 754. 
uh, not sure exactly why or how they are going to handle their updates but if you're on the Windows 10 version it also probably is going to take a long time uh, so I think that is a little beyond what I can do I I can only do curl as good as possible and I have a reliable and solid a release process and a release procedure and we do s good stuff and then I can only hope that the ones that actually care about distros and, and uh, is to, um, I mean getting curl into those distros they have to get their act together so yeah this is a page I usually come back to because we often get uh, bug reports on versions far down this uh, web page uh, uh, it amuses me sometimes because then I can see when we get a bug report on 7.19 somewhere we know that it is um, it is old and we get a lot of those I mean bug reports on very very old versions and I have this fun this is a fun accumulated bug fixes the column the third from the right and that's a good number to see here if, if you're going down a few years that's 3,000 bugs in 5.6 years. So um, just a few years, three years, 1,900 bug fixes. Two years, 1,400. So yeah, a lot of bug fixes. <coughs> okay. Um, I think that is it for now we're on two and a half hours i think we um we did good i did good i, I managed to cram out parallel transfers to this this level uh, if you want to you can get this branch of course you can check it out now and um, just go to this branch check it out build it and try it and see see how it works for you uh, in general I have a problem that people aren't actually <laughs> using things until I release them so sometimes when I do uh, uh, like this case this is a pretty big overhaul right we're at uh, now at uh, nine uh, 1200 lines added removed 767 it's a pretty big change I'm sure I will break something so unfortunately the things I break probably or most likely won't be found or reported before I release it because not that many use it or try it out before that and of course we have a lot of tests so I'm, I'm pretty confident that, that I mean most of the stuff still works exactly as it's supposed to but mm. anyway I'm going to uh, call that a fairly successful uh, uh, streaming session this was fun I think we had a, a viewer record on the stream right now. Woohoo! And it was a good uh, parallel uh, fun time. I'll be back. I'll, I'll, um, I'll put up, um, I'll probably figure out something. I, I think I'll go back to the Wolf SSH stuff. I, since I had those issues with the Wolf SSH yesterday, I filed a, a few issues. They were fixing it and had a, two other things that I didn't file either. I, I um, I emailed the uh, the main authors about it so hopefully I'll have a better SSH story by the time by early next week so I should get back on the Wolf SSH back and train next week maybe Monday Tuesday and um, maybe set up a stream then but uh, I I'll let you know and uh, until then um, curl safely and uh, see you later <laughs>